In today's show, we're gonna talk about Power Apps, Power BI integration, dynamic filtering. Yikes, what a mouthful. What it really means is we're gonna go into a Power App, we're going to add the Power BI tile with one of our Power BI reports, and then we're going to pass information from our Power App into that report so we can dynamically filter it. So that's really what we're gonna do, whatever the fancy words just said. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. In today's show, we're going to talk about Power BI integration in Power Apps. So we've done a couple other videos in the past where we've talked about kind of the precursors of this. But when I was developing our SharePoint uh, training class, I ended up embedding a Power BI report in there. And when I did it, I was like, well, that's kind of cute, but wouldn't it be much better if the data was filtered and looked and reflected what uh, record the user was actually looking at? I was like, that makes sense. So I actually had to go learn how to do this. I had to go figure all this out. And once I figured it out, I thought I'd share it with you guys. But the idea here is that we want to just take that Power BI tile, and instead of just showing a Power BI report, we want to be able to filter that report based on something we send it over from Power Apps. So that's enough blah, blah, blah. Let's go look at an example, and then we'll go talk about how to build it. Over here on my desktop, you can see that, you know, I'm in a modern SharePoint list. And so if I click on Jennifer's record here, you can see that I've customized the SharePoint list, right? This is part of my new SharePoint training class. We build this whole thing plus a bunch of other stuff. But as part of doing this, I was like, you know, it makes no sense to me these Power BI reports just show all the data. I only wanted to show Jennifer's records. So I needed to pass it Jennifer's ID, right? And so you can kind of see the, the way it's boom, 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 boom. And so if we go over here and we click on like Chewy's record, right? Different person you're gonna see it refreshes the data is in a different shape. So same report, but we're just passing it the user's ID and then in the back end, Power BI is dynamically filtering it. Pretty fancy stuff. So I thought you guys would wanna learn how to do it. And to do that, first thing we're gonna do, we'll jump over here to a blank app. And of course, we're going to insert a Power BI tile. Now, Microsoft, because they like to keep me guessing, you know, they renamed controls to input. That They also moved the Power BI tile who used to be at the bottom down here to now under charts, there's the Power BI tile, which makes sense because these charts aren't the greatest. I, you guys ask for videos on them occasionally, and I just don't use them enough to make a video, but maybe I will one day. But they said, hey, here's the Power BI tile because that's what you should really be using to put charts in your apps. Fair. So if you pull that in, you can then say, all right, you want to connect your tile to data. And so then you can choose your workspace. And so in my case, it is my, on my workspace. And then I have a dashboard here called Customer Order History. And then I have a tile called, nope, it's not that one. How about the SharePoint class orders? I have one called orders, boop. And so that would then bring in the full report, right? So it's not filtered, there's nothing going on. It's just that is the report as it sits in Power BI. So let's go over to Power BI and talk about the report there because I think that's gonna make this easier to understand. So there is that same report. You can see the colors are a little different. They didn't come over, I don't care. I'm, I'm not good at making pretty things, you guys know this? Um, and so when I'm over here, you know, I know I can come in and do different types of filtering in the Power BI, but we want to pass filters over there. So what I figured out was that you're actually able to pass query string parameters to filter the data dynamically. And so if you come over here to Power BI, you go to the URL and do a question mark, and then you just start to type in filter. And notice that filter is in lower at, uh, lowercase f, and you do an equal sign, and it keeps pre-populating while my practice runs. So then it says, all right, so now what is the data source? Which one of your Power BI data sources? So in my case, I wanted to use my orders data source. And then you do a forward slash, and then you're going to do the table, or not the table, the field that you want to uh, query on. So in my case, it is the field called customer ID. And so from there, it is your more of your, it's an OData type filter. So in our case, we want to do an equal. So it's not the equal sign, it is EQ. And then it's a, um, for my case, it's a, it's a number. And so I know like one of my numbers, I know Chewy's number I think is four. So I guess I shouldn't say no, I think Chewy's number is four. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put that in a single quote and then the number four and then a single quote, just like that. So filter equals data source forward slash field and then EQ four. Now that looks about right, so let's press enter. And so it should go and process. And you can see that, yes, the data looks different. And over here, the filtering pane automatically said, oh yeah, you filtered by customer ID is equal to four. Success. 
So it's really important if you're going to start playing with this that you come over and play here because it's a lot easier to troubleshoot what's happening if you can kind of see it in real time. So for example, one of the things I think I did wrong in the beginning was I said, how about filter equals orders slash customer ID. Oh, no, it's customer ID, EQ, and then a four. What does this do? So when I do it this time, it kind of freaks out and it didn't filter the data and notice it blew out the URL because it didn't understand what capital F for filter is. It only understood in lowercase. So I had to like sit here and bang my head against the table a whole bunch to figure it out. Now, in part of doing that, I found, you know, Microsoft has some decent documentation on this filter report using query string parameters in the URL. So I'll put a link to this down below, or if you're one of the uh, premium curated subscribers, then it's in the, uh, the assets uh, for this video. Anyway, in this URL, they talk about kind of how to do this and a lot of the considerations because, you know, my scenario, this is pretty straightforward, right? It, for me, it was just a simple little equals filter and then uh, filter equals, no, question mark. See, I get it wrong, question mark. Filter equals customer ID. And the browser is handling things like, uh, you know, putting the spaces and stuff in for me, so don't overthink that. But another thing that you'll find that you have to kind of play with, so for example, EQ4, right? So I am passing this a, to a number field, but for whatever reason, it's treating that number field as text, right? Because text is the single, is delimited by single quote. So when I tried to do this same query, but by a four, it's like, nope, not, what, not, not a thing, right? Because it didn't understand. And you get this type of interface where it says, I'm just showing you all of them because I really couldn't figure out what you meant. But so then I could come back up here and be like, all right, instead of EQ for that way, right? I put it the four in the quotes. So I had to kind of play with it. But when I went over to my SQL data source, right? I made a real simple chart here. I found out that when I was doing the filtering here, numbers didn't go in single quotes. So there's some nuances, um, especially with SharePoint as a data source, which is what this one is. So just kind of be ready to go and play and fight through those. Um, but yeah, so, so now that we understand what we want to do, now what we can do is we can go back over to uh, Power Apps and see how that might work. Okay, so then back over here in my blank app, right, there's nowhere to put in any of those weird parameters or query strings here. So we're gonna get out of this, but if you click on the Power BI tile, there is actually down here a tile URL. And so they went ahead and pre-populated this for you. Now, so they handled a bunch of this stuff, but one of the things that you wanna make sure you note here is that you see right here, They've already got a question mark. So if you're not a techie nerd like me, you might not know, but when you're doing query strings, you only have one question mark. And then when you have additional things you want to add in the query string, you have to add an ampersand. So that's a little bit different. Remember, we were over here, we kept doing the, we just went straight question mark because that was the first one. And so we we're saying the, the parameter filter is the query string. But so over here, because they've already got a question mark, we're not gonna do that, right? We got to learn little things. It's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the end of the line that they created and I'm going to say ampersand and then I'm going to say filter equals. Oh, it is not that is. Yeah, no, it is. It's filter. Oh my goodness. Filter equals. And then we're going to do our same thing. So orders customer ID. Oh, but I think customer ID was spelled this way, right? And I would probably tell you that, you know, copying and pasting from over here would probably cause you less grief. Yeah, so customer ID is all caps, so customer ID. So filter orders, customer ID, and then space, EQ, and then space, um, single quote for just like that. And if we go down there and look, we should see that looks different, right? And just to make sure that it's something different, if we change this four to a one, we get different, right? So we can see that now we have successfully set up our um, URL here. So it's dynamically changing. Now you're like, well, that's not dynamic. You're hard coding that, Shane. That's right. But once again, I like to go on baby steps because now this one big string, I know this works. So then now we can use all of our skills to make this string more dynamic. And so what I want to do is we could say, how about this? We'll, we'll do something super simple first because we want to do that. So we'll do a, we'll grab a slider, All right? We're going to say, hey, your default is one. Your range is from, 
your max is four, right? Because of the four values we have in there. So we know that, you know, as we move our slider, we can just throw a label on the screen and be like, all right, your, uh, so what are you, your slider, oh my goodness, slider one. And I promise this is gonna get cooler, but I just wanna make this, break this down. I know people are gonna ask, how do I do it different than the video? So that's why I'm showing you a couple of different ways to do this. So that would give you the output of the slider. And if you move the slider, that's changing. Perfect, okay? So then, so that could be our number representation. So I'm gonna copy that. So I'm gonna go over here, we know this URL works, but now we just wanna make this too dynamic. So the way that I do this is I'm gonna put in a quote, a space, and a quote, and then, because now I know I've kind of broken it into two strings, and if I put an ampersand, everything should work exactly as it did before, other than my parameter is empty, but at least I know that I'm back to a happy state. So then now what we're gonna do is we wanna put in the slider, and then another ampersand, and if I did that right, so then now, look, there's four. If I grab the slider and move it, it reworked to three, right? Go down here to one, boom. So now we've made it dynamic, right? Not the dynamic we want, we're gonna make it better, but, but that gives you, that's the mechanics of how this works, right? So all your URL up to the EQ, now be careful with your quotes, right? I still needed my single quote here, and then there's my other single quote inside the double quotes, but then between those two strings, we need to insert some way of spitting out a string, in our case, slider1.value, okay? So then let's make this better. So I'm gonna delete all this. He's really mad at me right now, right? Why is he mad? Because I've taken away the data. But what I wanna do is now I wanna filter on those customers. So I'm gonna say, hey, insert me a gallery. I'll do a vertical one. And so I know that the uh, the customers that's being referenced by that customer ID is in one of my SharePoint lists. I'm gonna go over here, type in SharePoint. Oh, spell SharePoint correctly will be helpful. And there we go, there's SharePoint. And so then I gotta go find the SharePoint site that that is. In my case, it is called SharePoint class because it's part of my training class I wrote. And so then in the customer list, we should see some customers. Let's see what we see. Not super helpful power apps, thanks for that. There we go, customer list. So there's the four customers. We'll change this to be title, subtitle, and body. And then just to make our lives easier, we'll just show this item.id right here because that's what we're looking up against, right? So there's your one, two, three, four. Fancy. So you can come over here now and be like, oh, well Shane's taught us how to do this before, right? What are we gonna do? We're gonna say, I want gallery one dot selected dot, and then ID should be down here. Oh my goodness, I'm just gonna type in ID because I don't wanna find it. There you go. And I'd probably grab my gallery real quick and be like, hey, let's set your template fill, just so we know which one we've selected. And so we can say Control A, we can say, if this item dot is selected, then we want to do, what are you guys feeling like? Uh, how about a nice aqua? Ooh, aquamarine, yeah, I like it. We'll do a little aquamarine, and if not, we'll do my color, right? Because they made this color just because I complained about it a lot. Thank you, Power Apps team. To transparent. So then now, so I'm browsing through the customer list. Oh, I want to see Greg's data. Well, I know I'm on Greg. And then boom, we have filtered our Power BI report by Greg, or by Shane, or by Jennifer. Woo woo, woo woo, yeah. And that's it, right? There's other little things you can play with. I guess the other thing you might not know necessarily, but if you click on this, it will send you over to um, Power BI. As far as I can tell, I don't know how to pass the filter when I click on it. Um, I kind of messed around with that. And I couldn't come up with any creative ways for that. But if you hmm, if you really tried, I think you could maybe come up with, not a way, right? Because that was by clicking on this, but you could make a button down here that would pass them over there. You wanna do that? Why not? I, I didn't even practice this. I just, I literally just figured out how to do this with my head, I think, I hope. I guess we'll find out together. So let's go down here. We're gonna throw a button on the screen. And so we know over here that, how did we do this before? When we were filtering the data, right? So that was a valid filter for four. So I'm gonna control A, control C. I'm gonna go over here. We're gonna use the launch. I'm kinda of nervous now. I didn't, I really am off the reservation. I did not try this ahead of time. So if we paste that in, let's make sure this works, right? We like baby steps, especially when I'm doing things on the fly. So if I press this button now, we'll just go here, we'll press the button. It should launch over to Power BI. Ah, oh, 
the data is pre-filtered by four. <laughs> this problem is already solved. All right, so then we'll go over here. We will look at once again, here's the string. And I know that in all of this URL encoding, that right here, this four is how it knew what it was. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna do our quotes, we're gonna do our quotes, we're gonna do our ambersands and our ambersands. And so then in here, right, what goes here? Gallery one dot selected dot ID. Oh man, I'm so excited. I like when I make up stuff on the fly. So then now if we click the button, it should take us over here and it should be filtered by number two. Yes! Look at that. We learned something together, right? Then this is the thing I try to remind you guys. Just try things, right? I like, you know, because I, my first idea was like, could I come in here and manipulate the settings of this? It turns out I can't. You know, there are, so there's Power BI integration interactions. You can turn those on or off. So then that way it does, if you had multiple, uh, you know, you can kind of get in there and filter and mess with that. But so I could have turned that on, load Power BI content. Well, of course I want you to load content. So there was only a few things in here. So I just had to reimagine. I'm like, wait a minute. I know how to make that URL. There's the URL. And then we know how to make the URL dynamic because we're smart little people and we did this. So awesome. All right. So I think that's all I've got for today. Nice, short, easy video. Remember, um, if you are a subscriber to my curated content at training.powerapps911.com, that you can go in there and you can download um, the app that I just built here with all the little URL links and all that, right? Not a lot of excitement here, but at least uh, would save you from typing in those type of functions and things. So that's available. This was all done as part of the SharePoint training class that I wrote where I teach you how to build this plus another app that's fully based on SharePoint. So nice little small SharePoint only training class. So. All right, and then I'm, we're working on a free Power BI class. We just haven't got that one done yet. I don't know. I'm done talking. It is Friday afternoon. I'm going to get this video produced. You guys are going to watch it. You're going to like it. You're going to subscribe to the channel. Life will be great. See the Halloween decorations. We got to go trick-or-treating soon. Too much fun. I guess with all that, I'm just going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.